Throughout history, mankind has shown how it thirsts for power and control, and the great lengths it will go to. The witch trials were one of the moments in history where some exploited the fear of the people around them for social gain. Some people believe the witch trials were all staged. Others believe that there really were covens practicing and covering up their tracks poorly. No matter what you believe, you are hard-pressed to deny that most, if not all, of the accusations stemmed from neighbors maliciously manipulating the mass hysteria to their own benefit. This tactic is commonly used among many dictators that we have observed throughout history. Humans are wired to survive. That is why we have lived for so long. And just as survival may call for war, it can also call for psychological warfare. Many have found that there are occasions when the weak was, must be told what to think for the greater good. There are those who believe that most of the manipulation came from the churches who were using the advantageous circumstances to rid their neighborhoods of those who threatened the collective belief system. In other words, they were trying to eliminate the townspeople who were straying or at risk for straying to different churches. To an extent, this may be true. It is very believable that some parishes utilize these methods of manipulation to maintain order in their town. Many new branches of Christianity were popping up at the time, and the churches were only satisfied with being the sole place to put your faith. This was a time in European history when statuses and classes of the people were establishing. As it stated in Encased in Steel, witchcraft accusations were means of people of any class were a means of people of any class to express their power over another. There are also some that believe that priests who were feeling particularly sexually repressed would take out their sexual frustration on the women that were driving them crazy. Some believe that priests used to accuse their objects of lust of witchcraft. However, it has been noted that witchcraft charges typically came from female neighbors of the accused, almost never from priests. This is the most logical explanation. It is instinct for us to try and take down those who threaten our way of life and, believe it or not, this kind of instinct can kick in even over something as petty as the woman three houses down being happier than you. It's a pretty basic territorial move. Someone is making you uncomfortable, but you can't get rid of them, so you destroy their credibility and make them a social pariah. The person being accused was usually a grown woman and would probably be sentenced to death by hanging or crushing. Throughout our lives, we are confronted by many different situations where we feel the need to have an acceptable place in society. These moments include, but are not limited to, years in grade school, work environments, living quarters, etc. During these various stages of life, it is difficult enough to adapt to the new surroundings. This would be made especially difficult had we also faced the danger of death, should the new people in our lives have had the privilege to eliminate us, should the need arise. The only fair way to appraise the Salem witch trials is to take into consideration the era in which they occurred. In 1692, things were much different than they are now. During that time, there was a lot of Puritan hysteria going on. Many people were very devout in their faith, and, although the trials were mostly used to eliminate those people who th that were higher up, that the higher up felt were a threat to their power, there was still a great deal of people who actually believed the trials were eliminating witches from their peers. The Puritans were very strict in their belief. They formed their religion on the ideal that they were superior in the Roman, from the Roman, superior to the Roman Catholics from England and that they had to reform the Church of England because they alone would be saved. The Puritans made their way over to America, like many others, to practice their religious freedom and founded a city called Boston in Massachusetts. They believed in the covenant with God and felt that salvation wasn't just the responsibility of the individual, but also felt on the shoulders of the community as a whole. Thus, the weeding out of Satan's followers commenced. Europe was not alone in the chaos of social control driving the witch trial hysteria. One of the only real witches during the Salem witch trials was a slave named Tituba. She was the servant of the newly appointed minister, Samuel Paris. She did indeed practice witchcraft spells from her culture. The hysteria all started when the young girls of the town began explaining, displaying odd behavior. They were feverish, frantic, screaming out nonsense, and going into trance-like states. 
Needless to say, the neighborhood doctor was at a loss for what it was that was ailing the girls. And in time, and in that time, when things could not be explained, they chalked it up to the devil. The very credible Tituba explained how she sometimes saw the devil in the form of a hog or a great dog and informed the town that there were witches among them. One of the first to be accused was the very influential Martha Corey, causing an uproar. How could the devil have infiltrated so deeply into their tight-knit community? Clearly, no one was safe from his influence. During her trial, it seemed everything goodwife Corey did had a direct influence on the already afflicted girls. If she bit her lip, the girls sported bite marks on their arms. If she pinched herself, the girls suffered the severe pinch. If she just leaned forward in her seat, the girls writhed in agony. Even a Mrs. Pope complained of her gestures and said it felt as if goodwife Corey was trying to tear out her bowels. A few others were accused of witchcraft, including Sarah Osborne, Sarah Good, and Tituba, all of which were sent to a Boston prison. Not all of the accused were lucky enough to rot in jail. Many were hanged as the trials were famous for. There was even a pressing. Poor Giles Corey, who refused to stand trial, was placed between two slabs of wood and giant stones were slowly added on top of him until he was pressed to death. Over 150 people were accused of witchcraft and sentenced to jail. Five of those people died in prison, including an infant. Eighteen people were hanged. They even hanged two dogs. Giles Corey remained the only person who was pressed to death. John Proctor and many other prisoners rightfully feared for their lives and knew they would not have a fair trial in Salem. They began writing letters to the reverends in to Reverends Increase Mather, James Allen, and jo Joshua Moody, Samuel Willard, and John Bailey, begging for a change of venue so that they may be, pro may be able to properly plead their innocence. They were tried in the court of Oyer and Terminer and were hanged in the gallows. Governor Phipps dissolved the court and proclaimed that spectral evidence could not be used against the defendants. The governor issued a proclamation that pardoned an accused and granted amnesty to those who fled upon being accused. The girls who were afflicted eventually asked for forgiveness for their actions. On October 17, 1711, there was an act passed that returned the land to the accused and awarded them compensation for their losses. This finally ended government involvement with the Salem witch trials, but did not necessarily stop the accusations and resentments. In a lot of cases, the witch trials were more of a scare tactic than an actual accusation of sorcery. Those on trial were the ones in town who thought differently or had something special about them that made them stand out enough to become a target. What did this tell the people of that town? That being different was a bad thing. That questioning their way of life would lead to trouble. Aside from likely setting us back a few years in societal progress, the rich trials instilled a very prudish and reserved way of living in the American lifestyle. Perhaps it stuck with our country a little bit more because of all the Puritan influence. America is often akin to an awkward teenager who was only taught to be ashamed of their body rather than to cherish it and the different things it can do. This would explain why many believe that the witch trials were a way for the churches mainly believed to be Catholic, to shape everyone's view of sexuality, particularly women's sexuality. There are many ways that a scare tactic like the witch trials could be used to shape a society to one person's view. It is so easy to manipulate people into believing someone is dangerous or has to be killed if the alternative is to agreeing with you is being killed as well.